Hi, today we talk about JavaScript. JavaScript was born in 1995 and it is a high-level interpreted programming language. The goal of JavaScript as of today is to dynamically change your HTML and your CSS code so you do not have to refresh the page. However, it is so widely used that developers use JavaScript for mobile and even desktop development. As you probably know, HTML and CSS are used client-side in order to create user interfaces like here in Develop. Everything you see here is done with HTML, CSS and of course JavaScript. Those we can all agree that because JavaScript can change your HTML code and your CSS code on the fly without having to reload the page, JavaScript is used for client-side scripting. So what I mean is that if I click this button here, my HTML code will change on the fly without having to reload the page. So I click and here it is. Because JavaScript is inside the HTML file, it means that you can see and copy it. So if I inspect this page, I can go to Sources and Next, which is the directory, and here now you can have, you can see some JavaScript code, you can pretty print it so you can see the source code. So you can view the JavaScript or the HTML or the CSS code on your browser, there is nothing wrong with that. And you can actually go to any, brow any website and you can download or see the source code, even on Facebook or you know Google and other big websites, you can always do that. However, this is not the case with programming languages such as Java or Python, because the source code runs on the server. Here, the source code runs on the browser. So this is why you have access to the source code. So if you go to network, you can actually see all the resources that are downloaded. Okay, so you can go, just go to network, all, and then refresh the page, and you will see everything that is downloaded. Okay, so now pay attention. Most of the people believe that the JavaScript is used only client side, and this is not true. Even at the very, very beginning, Netscape, the creators, we can say, of JavaScript, the company that created JavaScript, they also created server-side JavaScript. So server-side JavaScript could do exactly that. It could do things that server-side languages do, like Python or Java. So JavaScript is not just for the browser. JavaScript is not just for the client-side part. It is also for the server side. So this is very misleading for newcomers in JavaScript because they believe that JavaScript is no just for that, just for the browser. But the browser is only one use of JavaScript. We also mentioned uh, mobiles and desktop applications. And Node.js is a JavaScript uh, running server side and it is very, very powerful. So I mentioned Netscape. Netscape was one of the first browsers or navigators used for what modern browsers are used nowadays, like Chrome, Firefox and Safari. So it was like the father of all modern browsers. So this was done back in 1994, though this was one year before the release of JavaScript, which was 1995. So the release of Netscape was the first major step into modern web browsers. So the reason Brandon Ake, and hopefully I pronounce his name correctly, so Netscape hired Brandon and they asked him to create JavaScript. So the reason uh, Brandon Ake created JavaScript was for the Netscape navigator. Now, a misconception, so another misconception about JavaScript, the first one was that JavaScript is used only for the browser, and this is not true. So another misconception is that JavaScript uh, actually, the difference between JavaScript and Java. So a lot of newcomers believe that JavaScript is like a subset of Java or something like that. But no, JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. Believe it or not, the reason JavaScript was called JavaScript after being renamed two times is because during that time, Java was becoming very, very popular and some guys somewhere, you know, decided to name it JavaScript because of the marketing part. So it was all about marketing. 
Okay, now what about ECMAScript? So nowadays you will hear a lot of developers, JavaScript developers, using the terms ES6, ES5, ES7, ES8, and the, all the upcoming ES editions. So ES is ECMAScript, and 6 or 7 or whatever the number is, is the edition. Those, what is ECMAScript? ECMAScript, as you can see here, is just a standard. So it, this is a document, okay? This is just a document with text on it. There is no implementation, there is no source code. It just tells you how, how things should be done. It is just pseudocode. Because this document is very abstract, since it doesn't go into algorithms and how you should implement uh, a specific method, implementations will vary. Suppose you have the, the method insert, okay? ECMAScript will let you know what insert is and how you should implement insert, but the way you implement it, the algorithms you use to implement insert depend on you. This is why browser A is faster than browser B because you know the algorithms that browser A used are faster than the algorithm the algorithms used in browser B. This is also why we have incompatibilities, right? So for example, this is the static keyword. This keyword static was released in um, so in Firefox it was it was released in version 45, which means that versions below version 45 do not have the static keyword uh, accessible. So for example, Internet Explorer has no support for the static keyword. Of course, this is because Internet Explorer is now not anymore supported, but Edge, as you can see on the other hand, has support for for this static keyword. However, you will find uh, you know, other browsers having no support, even for very, very basic things that you expect to be supported, they're not. I want to illustrate these browser compatibility problems with a bug. With iOS 12, Safari introduced a bug, a problem, an issue in JavaScript. This was a very serious bug because you could open a website in Firefox and Chrome and the result was like perfect, so it was, it, it was correct. But somebody opening the website on Safari would see a different result. So if you want to know more about this bag, you can go to this Stack Overflow question and you can read uh, through, this, uh, through the comments here. Okay, so now let's continue with some drama. What I like the most in programming is drama. I mean, whenever I see a controversial post, I immediately like turn very happy because I know that if I go to that post, I will just see people complaining, people, you know, trying to fight that, hey, you know, uh, JavaScript is so cool. And the other person will be like, no, JavaScript was very badly designed. JavaScript sucks. And then somebody else will come and say that, Programming drama is like super fun, super fun to read through the comments. You will just see people fighting with each other for st stupid things that they don't have to fight about, you know? Anyway, so why there is so much hate about JavaScript? So why whenever you go on Twitter or on Reddit and you start, you know, searching for JavaScript, you just see people complaining about JavaScript, about the design, that it is, that uh, the language itself sucks. It is slow and, you know, I can go on forever. The thing is that most of the stuff is true because JavaScript was created in 10 days. So you can understand that in 10 days, you cannot create something great, something super powerful. So the design initially was very bad and the design is still bad to this, days, to this day because you cannot go back and change the design. If you change the design, you break the internet. So JavaScript has to be uh, backward compatible, which means that a piece of code that worked 10 years ago, it still works today. So they cannot go back and remove a bug or delete something that doesn't work or it shouldn't be there anymore. So they cannot do that. However, with new versions, JavaScript is becoming better and better. So ECMAScript 6 or ES6 for short is what made JavaScript good again. So a lot of issues were solved in ES6 and uh, JavaScript gained a lot of popularity after ES6 was released with new libraries and frameworks being implemented. 
However, it took 7 years to release ES6. ES5 was released in 2009 and ES6 in 2016. So for 7 years, JavaScript was, it was down. Everybody was getting updates except JavaScript. So everybody was up to date, especially C Sharp. C Sharp is like super powerful when it comes to updates. So it is a very modern language, but the JavaScript was the total opposite. So of course, if you stay inactive for seven years and your language sucks and it is still you know, with very old technologies, you will have people hating JavaScript, right? But uh, that was the past. ECMA, the company that implements ECMAScript, has promised that every year we will have a new ECMAScript version. Those, if you hear somebody complaining about JavaScript is because one, they don't know what JavaScript is and the beauty of JavaScript. Two, they never heard of ES6 and all the ES versions, ES editions. And three, they just complain about anything. Another reason developers hate JavaScript is its flexibility. But the same can be said for PHP, for example, right? So PHP and JavaScript, they're very, very flexible. However, flexibility, even if, uh, even if it allows you to do things that in other programming languages you cannot do, too much flexibility results into bad written code. Of course, that depends on the developer as well, but the language sometimes it pushes you to take that route. The future of JavaScript, though, is bright. ECMA will release a new version every year. They pinky promised, and they cannot take that promise back now. So new libraries and frameworks pop up every month, and this is like the worst nightmare for JavaScript developers. And this is like the only problem in JavaScript that you have to stay up to date with all the latest trends, and it is super, super difficult to do nowadays. All right, so this was a very long introduction, but I wanted to make sure that you know what JavaScript is, you know a bit of history behind JavaScript, why it was created, why there is so much hate, what is ECMAScript that everybody confuses it. So yeah, anyway, so my name is Renato and this was the story, the story of JavaScript.